Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jen Benoza, and I'm the Campaign Director in the Office of Health Communication and Education at FDA Center for Tobacco Products. I'm pleased to welcome you to the launch of FDA's latest public education effort called Next Legends, a youth e-cigarette prevention campaign. The goal of the campaign is to educate American Indian and Alaska Native youth ages 12 to 17 about the harms of vaping through unique branding and tailored messaging, both created to inspire a new generation to live native strong and vape free. Joining us to present this campaign to you today are Dr. Robert Kayla, FDA's commissioner, Michelle Matal, Acting Director of the FDA Center for Tobacco Products, Dr. Loretta Christensen, Chief Medical Officer of the Indian Health Service, and from the Center for Native American Youth, we have Cheyenne Brady, Senior Programs Manager, and Tristan Black, a youth leader. We're fortunate to have such a distinguished and diverse group of speakers who will offer a variety of perspectives about the Next Legends campaign and the issue of youth vaping prevention in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. We'll begin with remarks from each of our speakers, and then you'll have an opportunity to ask us questions. And now, please welcome FDA Commissioner Dr. Robert Kayla. Thanks, Jim, and hello, everyone. I'm excited to help kick off the FDA's new Next Legends campaign today. FDA's mission is to protect and promote the public health, and this campaign, with its focus on educating young people about the harms of e-cigarettes, is central to our agency's work. E-cigarettes remain the most commonly used tobacco product by youth, with more than 2 million U.S. middle school and high school students reporting current use last year. This greatly concerns me, not only as the FDA commissioner, but as a doctor, parent, and grandparent. Based on discussions with my 18-year-old grandkids who are graduating from high school this year, I'm worried about the magnitude of the youth vaping issue. Some of you might remember that I previously served as FDA commissioner, having been appointed by President Obama in 2016. But you might not know that before that, I was FDA's deputy commissioner for medical products and tobacco. In addition, I'm a cardiologist who worked in a busy practice in North Carolina. So I've seen firsthand the heart disease, cancer, and other suffering caused by the use of tobacco products. The suffering of people and their families when they can't breathe or have untreatable pain from cancer, leaves an indelible impression on a doctor like me. Those illnesses typically develop over many years and affect adult smokers, but almost all adults who smoke first started using tobacco products before they were 18 years old. Almost 500,000 Americans will die from tobacco-related illnesses this year alone, and almost all of them started using tobacco products in their youth. And young people today, unlike uh, when many of us were teenagers, are more likely to start using e-cigarettes rather than combusted cigarettes. Let me be clear, e-cigarettes are not harmless. E-cigarettes contain many harmful and potentially harmful constituents, and they contain nicotine, which creates cravings and often leads to addiction, making it difficult to quit. The craving comes from the alteration of the brain, leading to intense negative feelings until the craving is satisfied by another hit of nicotine. This was well known to tobacco companies going back 50 years, and now the concentration of nicotine in e-liquids has the same effect. Preventing young people from first trying e-cigarettes or from becoming regular users of e-cigarettes is a priority for FDA and consistent with our goal to protect public health. So we've made it a priority to protect our youth from the harms of e-cigarettes both through regulation and education. Next Legends is part of FDA's ongoing educational efforts to reduce the enormous public health burden of tobacco use, and it complements our other tobacco prevention campaigns aimed at youth and young adults. This campaign, by focusing on American Indian and Alaska Native communities, also marks another step our agency has taken to improve health outcomes and address health disparities affecting minority and underserved populations. This too has been a priority of our agency and for me personally. Next Legends is an FDA initiative, but as you'll hear from the other speakers, this project has included the voices and values of the native community at every stage of its development. And we look forward to continuing to work in partnership with you for the successful implementation of this campaign. 
We value, and in fact, we need the stakeholders participating in the launch event today. Tribal, state, and local government leaders, public health officers, youth advocates, teachers, coaches, counselors, parents, and native youth to all work together in the weeks and months ahead to help spread our messages. I want to commend the work done by our Center for Tobacco Products on this groundbreaking campaign that most certainly will protect the health uh, and inspire our native youth. Thank you, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Acting Director of the Center for Tobacco Products, Michelle Mattal. You're on mute, Michelle. Thank you, Dr. Caleb. We truly appreciate having you here to help us launch this campaign. And thank you to everyone joining us today to kick off Next Legends, our newest public education campaign and one developed specifically for American Indian and Alaska Native youth. Many of you are all too familiar with the health disparities and adverse health outcomes affecting American Indians and Alaska Natives, including those related to tobacco use. Unfortunately, Native youth are disproportionately more likely to use tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, than non-Native youth. Research findings showed that about 20% of Native high school students reported using electronic vapor products frequently, defined as use on 20 or more days in the last 30 days, compared to about 11% of high school students overall. Such frequent use is concerning because it suggests that the teens could be developing a dependence on or an addiction to nicotine. And by using e-cigarettes frequently, they're being exposed more often to harmful chemicals and toxic metals that the products may contain. Vaping poses serious health risks to youth, especially during adolescence, when the brain is still developing and is especially susceptible to nicotine. Therefore, the Next Legends campaign was developed to prevent and reduce tobacco use among American Indian and Alaska Native youth, ages 12 to 17, who are at risk for using e-cigarettes. The campaign is primarily a digital-based effort designed to reach young people with science-based information presented in engaging formats and on the digital platforms that are popular among youth, such as YouTube, Twitch, Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram. In addition to digital channels, Next Legends will also use billboards and radio in select markets across the United States with high native populations, including near reservations and Native American centers, such as Browning, Montana, and Tulsa, Oklahoma. In addition, the campaign will air on local television in Alaska. As you will see, the messaging aims to inspire Native youth by using tailored messages that are values-based and culturally aligned to offer an encouraging voice to young people to prevent escalation of ends use and to discourage those who are not using them from doing so. We'd like to now show you the two video ads created for this campaign, each of which will run through twice. My grandfather told me a story about how Trickster could turn itself into whatever it wanted and walk about our community deceiving people. When you vape, you can inhale toxic metals like nickel and lead into your lungs. That's metal in your lungs. Don't be fooled. My grandfather told me a story about how Trickster could turn itself into whatever it wanted and walk about our community deceiving people. When you vape, you can inhale toxic metals like nickel and lead into your lungs. That's metal in your lungs. Don't be fooled. When family comes second to vaping, you're no longer in control. Dakota! 
When family comes second to vaping, you're no longer in control. A lot of hard work has gone into making this campaign a reality. And I want to thank the entire CTP team, our ad agency partners, and so many from the Native community who provided their expertise and guidance for the tremendous work they did to bring Next Legends to life. On behalf of my, all of my colleagues at FDA, we look forward to working with all of those here today, committed to protecting the health of Native youth and encouraging Native youth to be, as the theme of the campaign states, Native Strong, Vape Free. I'll now turn it over to Jen Benoza, our center's campaign division director, who will provide additional insights into the making of the Next Legends campaign. Thank you so much, Michelle. As you've heard, the Center for Tobacco Products has previously launched multiple public education campaigns over the year. In 2014, we launched our first cigarette prevention campaign, The Real Cost, that was designed to reach national teen audiences. This was followed by tailored efforts to reach specific populations who remained at risk for cigarette use. This included tailored efforts for African American, Hispanic, Asian American, and Pacific Islander youth, for LGBTQ plus young adults, for rural male youth at risk for using smokeless tobacco, and for adult cigarette smokers to encourage more frequent attempts at quitting. More recently, we are prioritizing youth e-cigarette prevention messages under the real cost umbrella and now with our new campaign, Next Legends. Our campaigns have allowed us to provide factual, science-based information about the risks and harms of tobacco products. But equally important, we've also found unique and innovative ways to get teens to notice our ads and break through the clutter of the ever-evolving and crowded media environment. In creating Next Legends, we were able to build on the successes of previous campaigns and what we learned from them. It has been very important for us uh, that when we developed the new campaign, we tailored it especially for American Indian and Alaska Native youth, since we know they are at such high risk for tobacco use. As with all our publication, um, public education efforts, we emphasize conducting research with the intended audience to ensure our messages are meaningful and relevant to them. From the beginning, we knew we needed to develop a deep understanding of the mindset, values, and tobacco use behaviors among American Indian and Alaska Native youth. We consulted with Native subject matter experts, and work with two ad agencies, Rescue Social Change Group and G&G. G&G is a Native-owned ad agency with over 20 years of extensive experience working with this community on a variety of public health issues. We also focused on hearing directly from Native youth themselves. We conducted multiple focus groups over several years with Native teens across key ge geographic areas. Through our consultations and research with Native teens, we gained key insights that helped inform our strategy and message, messaging approach for Next Legends. For example, we initially intended to focus the effort on cigarette prevention, but during our research with teens, we heard clearly from youth that vaping was their primary concern. They wanted more information about the harms of vapes and were motivated by messages that provided new information about the negative health effects. As a result, the Next Legends campaign speaks authentically to Native teens and reflects an ex uh, understanding of key cultural aspects and community norms. For example, the animated ad you saw called Trickster utilizes a powerful tool in native culture, storytelling. It conveys cautionary messages about the dangers of vaping. In the other ad called Out of Your Control, it fe features an intergenerational home in real life scenario to illustrate how vaping and nicotine can make you lose control and affect the ones you love, such as elders. Now I'd like to share a video that brings our audience and research to life. It'll outline our goals and how we plan to achieve them and further explain how our creative content has developed. Next Legends is a part of FDA's commitment to address vaping use among teens. And is specifically made for American Indian and Alaska Native youth. Next Legends is gonna highlight the dangers of vaping so that our community can stay native strong, vape free. Through focus groups with American Indian and Alaska Native teens and conversations with community members and public health partners throughout Indian Country, Next Legends has identified key insights from our communities that are foundational to the campaign. 
we learned that Native teens have admirable goals, like doing the right thing and being healthy. For us, it's about achieving our goals and building the future to be healthy in mind, body, and spirit. A healthy mind is the mental strength to work through our emotions and persevere in life. Body is our physical well-being and being physically capable of doing the things that matter to us. And spirit is the belief that we are part of something bigger than ourselves and it's respect for our culture, community, and our environment. community plays a big role in this because we see our family and our community as people who get us, understand our goals, and know our struggles. It's these relationships that guide us and keep us healthy, strong, and safe. We are proud of our Native heritage and protective of who we are and where we come from. We will not let vaping hold us back from a healthy mind, body, and spirit. Next Legends is a campaign that meets teens where they live and on platforms they use the most. Overall, the campaign hopes to encourage youth like me to be next legends, native strong, native strong, native, native strong, they free. free. As you have seen with the two ads and that campaign background video, and as you'll hear from our upcoming speakers, we've worked to create a campaign that native youth can identify with and that reflects their experiences and values, and that provides them information they want and need to lead healthier lives. We're excited to expand our current youth e-cigarette prevention efforts by launching Next Legends, and to continue to work in partnership with all of you committed to supporting Native youth. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Loretta Christensen, an enrolled member of the Navajo Tribe and Chief Medical Officer of the Indian Health Service. Dr. Christensen is a lead expert on medical and public health topics, giving technical consultation and guidance to the IHS Office of the Director and staff throughout the country on American Indian and Alaska Native health care policies and issues. Thank you so much and good afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity to be part of the next Legends launch event today. I want to thank the FDA for inviting me to participate in today's kickoff of the campaign designed to educate American Indian Alaskan Native youth about the harm of using vaping products. The Indian Health Service is concerned about the use of commercial tobacco products amongst American Indians and Alaska Native youth and adults. While smoking has declined to 12.5% among the general adult population in the U.S., it remains elevated amongst American Indian and Alaska Native adults at 27%. When it comes to the use of vape products, almost 58% of American Indian and Alaska Native high school students did report use in comparison to just over 50% amongst overall high school students, according to the 2019 Youth Risk Behavioral Survey. I would like to mention that the IHS respects the traditional use of sacred tobacco for ceremonies, prayers, and medicinal purposes among some tribes, and it is very important to understand the distinction between commercial and traditional tobacco use. While providing educational awareness or developing materials about the harms of commercial tobacco production, productions, we make these distinctions very clearly. We emphasize that commu commercial to <clears throat> excuse me, tobacco products contain nicotine and other additives that are harmful to the user, and this includes any bystanders or family members who are exposed to second and third hand smoke or the aerosol. Many young people may view vaping as socially acceptable. Vaping products can contain other harmful substances be besides the nicotine. And young people who use vaping products may also have an increased risk for future addiction to other drugs. As you've heard today, nicotine is highly addictive and can harm adolescent brain development, which continues into the early to mid 20s. IHS serves over 550,000 American Indian and Alaska Indian children at federal, tribal, and urban sites, including 34 in metropolitan centers. Some of the strategies to address vaping and other commercial tobacco products are 
screening patients who are eight years of age and older for commercial tobacco use and exposure when they come to clinic, integrating education on harms of commercial tobacco use, including vape products in our family home visitation programs that target maternal and child health, providing educational awareness on the harms of using commercial tobacco products in schools and communities, working with tribal communities to develop their own tobacco-free policies, providing the sacred circle of tobacco to engage youth and their adult mentors to learn about the history of traditional tobacco use and develop leadership, decision-making, and advocacy skills to promote health through cultural values and cultural teachings, collaborating with other programs to provide webinars focusing on best and promising practices to address vaping, and our IHS task force on vaping continues to look for opportunities for collaboration to address vaping. Activities that are in the works are developing a culturally tailored e-cigarette toolkit consisting of infographics, posters, and YouTube stories of youth who successfully quit. I'd like to thank you again for inviting me to launch the Next Legends to deter American Indian and Alaska Native youth from using vaping products. We will share this resource with our tribes, IHS, and urban Indian organizations as we are always looking for new resources and open to collaborating with other agencies and organizations to address commercial tobacco use. One organization doing great work on this is the Center for Native American Youth, which is represented by our next speakers. We will hear first from Ms. Cheyenne Brady, a senior programs manager with the center. Ms. Brady. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Sharon Brady. I'm coming to you today from the ancestral homelands of the Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara Nation. I'm an enrolled member of the Sac and Fox Nation and also represent the Cheyenne. Um, my educational background is I have a Master of Public Health with a specialization in American Indian Public Health and currently working um, towards a PhD in Indigenous Health. And so um, you know, and above above my educational background, I am an Indigenous woman and mother, and I have a very big passion for prevention and ensuring the positive health outcomes of our Indigenous youth. And so I, too, want to thank the FDA for inviting myself, inviting the Center for Native American Youth, our staff, and some of our youth leaders who are passionate about um, increasing health outcomes for the Indigenous youth population. As mentioned, um, here on behalf of the Center for Native American Youth, we are a policy program within the Aspen Institute. We have been in operation for almost 11 years now. We're really excited about that and our work. Uh, we center research and advocacy, uh, resource development and exchange, youth recognition, leadership and development, and we work to build and drive a Native youth-led narrative. As mentioned, our mission here at CNAY uh, as an advocacy organization is to improve the health, safety, and overall well-being of Native youth. Our vision is that all Native American youth can lead full and healthy lives, have equal access to opportunity, and have the opportunity to draw strength from their culture and to inspire one another. Uh, we see much of our strengths as, um, by being a youth-informed program, a youth-informed center, we're, and, and, but beyond that, we are, we are truly youth-led. So we have a youth advisory board that guide our programming. And so again, in recognition of Next Legends, I appreciate the, the time and effort that was went into community to truly hear the voices of our Indigenous youth, because they are, they are leaders now. They know what is going to be needed um, to increase their health outcomes. And one of the our points of pride here at CNAY is that we center indigenous knowledge. So we're often using our indigenous methodologies, our indigenous traditions, and recognizing that that those are different among some tribes and being respectful of those those um, slight differences or difference in differences in beliefs. And um, we have 
typically we have about seven programs going at one time while we're infusing our Indigenous knowledge and Indigenous methodologies, uh, often using Indigenous evaluation metrics as well. Um, but throughout our programming, we're incorporating health messaging to ensure that we're educating on youth on risks and benefits of various actions. And, and again, that aligns very much so with the Next Legends campaign and underscoring that culture is prevention. So if we can collectively um, ingrain our culture, ingrain our beliefs, align that messaging with who our youth are and how they identify, uh, we are helping to uh, guide them in, in to good paths and on good paths. And so I thank you again. I know that this campaign is going to bring a great uplift to, to many of our people, our elders, our adults who are actively wanting our youth to avoid vaping. Um, there is a lot of, for some reason, there's a lot of access to vaping. And even within our programming, we're finding that our kids have access or have, have been able to try vaping. And so, so we too will be utilizing the Next Legends campaign and the videos within our programming. Um, I appreciate that it has accurate messaging because that is a problem within many of our communities is that there's essentially no messaging. Um, so our youth are not always aware of the negative health effects that are coming from these vapes and from other um, items. And so I appreciate the, the positive, the, the accurate messaging, the ability for youth to see someone who looks like them within the messaging and providing them a positive message. Uh, these are youth that they look up to, that they that they know within their communities. And so again, thank you for inviting us and thank you for allowing youth to lead in this campaign. Um, thankful that this campaign has again, truly listened to our youth and is going to, is, is youth driven. Uh, we often hear of the setbacks uh, that our people face, of the marginalization that our people face. But at the end of the day, we are a truly resilient people and we have overcome so much and we will continue to overcome. And together as a collective, uh, we can prevent vaping in our youth and increase their quality of life. And so I thank you all for being here today. And I want to hand it over to an amazing Indigenous youth leader himself, uh, Tristan Black. He is one of our champions for change this year at the Center for Native American Youth, someone I am beyond proud of, uh, honored to know, and grateful to share space with today. Tristan. Thanks, Cheyenne, and thanks for everybody. Really great speakers, Donna and Shenigi, Kian in the Schlecht, or Tordichini, Bashishin. Arizona College, the Enish Kant, and Arizona State University, the Enish Kant, Indigenous Education by Enish Kant. So, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are out there. My name is uh, Tristan Black. I'm part of the Towering House Clan, born for the Bitterwater Clan. My maternal lineage is of the Folding with Arms Clan, and my paternal lineage is of the Many Goats Clan. I'm Coming to you from Tsele, Arizona, on the Navajo Nation, and I went to school at Diné College, got my undergraduate in Diné studies there, and I'm now pursuing my graduate studies in Indigenous education at Arizona State University. So that's who I am, where I'm coming from, and really glad to be here with everybody and listening to these speakers, really great speakers, and the connection with CNAY Champions for Change program is a really good program. And it really aligns with this Congo, not Ani, creating leaders now and into the future. And it's really giving promotion to youth leadership. And how do we engage with our grandmas and our grandpas, our younger people, our peers, and even with leadership? How do we engage with them? And I think one of the biggest ways we always learn is through that we listen to our stories just like the videos that you saw earlier, you know, one thing that came to mind was a lot of our stories have warriors and a lot of those warriors help protect our people. They help protect our culture, our language, our way of life. And there were some evil monsters out there that all across 
our communities and these warriors help protect us they they slayed a lot of those monsters to keep us safe to keep us going for generations to come and some of those monsters were get rid of they were they were uh, taken away and now what we hear a lot within our tribal communities is we still have modern monsters these modern monsters are still plaguing a lot of our tribal communities and one of them is you know this new idea new monster that we see uh, vaping and e-cigarettes and all these toxics uh, entities products that are plaguing some of our tribal communities and with the speakers that we've heard today these are some of our warriors our modern warriors that are helping to combat our modern monsters and with the navajo warriors we have they were navajo warriors and one of the things they always taught us to remember is making sure you have a healthy mind you have it's east our bodies, you take care of your body to achieve your personal goals, your academic goals, your own goals to live long before you. And the other thing that they taught us is how do you take care of your mind? You have positive thinking, you have positive thoughts. And with those positive thinking, you're able to create change within your community. You're able to help one another out in your community. And you're not in it alone. You have a support system with you. You have your ama, aje, you have your mom, you have your dad, you have your grandma, your grandpa, you have your friends, you have your aunts, your uncles. You have the support system with you. So when we talk about vaping and how it holds us back, it, it goes back to that concept of our Navajo warriors, our native warriors that are going and combating these modern monsters and it's all for our own growth our own development and how we interact with one another as us as a lot of young people we're still growing we're still developing and we don't want anything to interfere with our own growth we don't want anything to interfere with our development but there's all these forces that try to you know, disrupt our learning, disrupt, disrupt our growth. And if we have a positive mind, if we take care of ourselves, if we keep that support system around us, just like our warriors did, we're able to get through anything. We're able to get over that hurdle and not have all these distractions around us. And so I think vaping, holding a lot a back of American Indian and Alaska Native teens from their aspirations, you know, it's their barrier, whether it be social, emotional, physical, or our spiritual uh, well-being. It's really important. Even we have peer pressure within our communities. Some of our friends, some of our relatives, they pressure you into doing it. But as long as you have a good mind, you're taking care of your body, and you have a good support system around you, you can get over those obstacles, and you can continue to learn and grow with your own aspirations. And it all comes back to community health, family health, spiritual health. And one of the things we always hear from grandma and grandpa is our cultural teachings provide us a way out and they restore a lot of our emotional, physical well-being. And just like at the end of a prayer or end of a storytelling, you learn these teachings, you learn these protocols. And at the end of a prayer, we say, we restore beauty. We want to restore beauty all across our tribal communities. And that's our goal. And with all these initiatives that are going on and these modern warriors that are combating these modern monsters, we can get it done. We can restore a lot of our tribal communities within our own families, within our own friends, our schools, even our youth council. So I'd like to challenge all of our young people to have that conversation with your friends, with your family, and even engage your own tribal leadership, your own tribal leaders. What do you know about vaping in our tribal communities? What can we do as young people to help out? What can we do to change some of these policies that align better with our 
indigenous thinking, our indigenous body, our indigenous well-being, so that we can all move forward together within our tribal communities and restore that beauty. And it all starts with us, ourselves, and taking care of ourselves, self-care strategies, self-care plans. And if we're able to do that, we're able to go a long ways with our native youth, our native uh, siblings, and we create a path for them to create a path to open that up and have really good outcomes for a lot of our tribal communities. So I just wanted to thank all of our speakers that were here today and then the visual animation videos. We're all doing a good job and we still need to combat those modern monsters. So again, I just want to say thank you and then I'll pass it over to Ms. Inonza. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Tristan, for sharing your personal experience and perspective as a Native youth and as a youth leader. Um, I want to thank all the uh, other speakers who also contributed distinct and important perspectives on youth vaping. Um, now we're going to move into our question and answer portion of the program. As a reminder, um, please type in um, any questions you have in the ask the box um, box or ask a question box at the bottom of the screen. And if you want to direct it to a specific speaker, please add that into your question. Um, I think we have a first question here. Um, it says, I work with the Paula Band of um, Mission Indians California Tobacco Program. Can the ads you presented be made available to our youth coalition by providing a link through Instagram? Um, I can take that question. Uh, I think um, on the screen you see an um, email. Uh, if you email uh, the askctp at fda.hhs.gov, we'll work with you um, um, to kind of tailor um, you know, to your uh, needs. And if there are other questions around availability or use of the ads or other assets we have, um, please uh, send an email to that um, box. Do we have any other questions? Did you provide the I don't have access to them, sorry. <clears throat> While we're uh waiting for that, maybe I can ask Michelle um a question as a um resident um expert at CTP. What what is the current trajectory? I mean, we know this is a special problem um, that you're addressing in special ways. So, what is what is the trend that you're seeing in uh, vaping in this community? Thank you, Dr. Caleb. Um, so, yes, we are, um, you know, as we've discussed, concerned about the at-risk population in this community um, in terms of. Um, susceptibility to try these products, um, which has raised, you know, a lot of concerns and, and has helped, you know, as we worked toward developing this campaign um, to make sure that we're providing um, information for um, youth um, so that they understand the risks and we can try to prevent um, Native youth from starting to use these products. I think we looked at, you know, 400,000 um, youth and, you know, the susceptibility of being at risk in this community is being disproportionately high. And so it's something that we want to make sure to address through use of this campaign. And so um, all, you know, part of our sort of comprehensive efforts to address um, youth use of e-cigarettes um, that includes, importantly, the public education um, campaigns and the one that we're talking about today, as well as um, our compliance and enforcement efforts. Um, when we see violations of the law, such as you know, sales to someone who's underage, um, as well as our scientific review of new products before they can be legally marketed. So um, all of this together um, is our comprehensive approach to um, display our, our deep commitment to preventing youth tobacco use. And uh, today, with the focus on um, Native youth and tailoring this really important campaign to this uh, critical audience, 
um, help support those efforts. So um, hope that answers your question. Thank you, Michelle. I think we have another question directed to me. What does the FDA hope to accomplish with Next Legends? Um, I think as you've heard um, all the, the speakers, um, FDA's goal is to reduce the death, disease, and harm produced by the use of tobacco products. And I think as you heard also the more personal desire is to really support um, the Native youth who you know, really are um, looking to have a positive impact on the generation. I think Cheyenne and Tristan, you really echoed a lot of what we heard when we were in groups with, with teens. They have um, so much pride in their culture. And I loved how you talked about the modern monster because I think we heard similar types of um, uh, context when we were um, in, in different communities. Um, so we hope that we contribute to you know, preventing the use and escalation of ends um, and, and also supporting kind of a healthier lifestyle as you have all described. Okay. Another question for Dr. Christensen. The uh, American Indian Alaska Native population is faced with so many other important health um, concerns. Why is youth tobacco prevention so important? Um, yes, thank you so much. And, um, you know, thanks very much to Mr. Black, who so very well stated um, the, the uh, challenges of our youth today that we need to support them. But our, our 400,000 Native teens in the United States, more than half of them are at risk for com commercial tobacco use. This is our future. They are an integral part of our tribal communities, and we must bring attention to this challenge that they're facing. A lot of it is just providing the information. You know, a lot of things in our in our history as American Indian Alaska Natives has been because we didn't understand, we didn't know what the enemy was, we didn't know what the monster was at that time. And I think it's very important to be very clear, very transparent, and very open with our youth to say, this is what could happen, and this is what it means to you as, as the youth in the tribal community. And this is what it means to our community to have you fall ill or, or be, um, you know, have a disease develop due to the use of vape products. So when we demonstrate this higher tobacco susceptibility and use, um, this is much more prominent in our youth of the American Indian and Alaska Native communities. They contain such high levels of nicotine. It's so highly addictive. We want our young people to have every chance to succeed and to stay healthy, to be well in, in mind, body, spirit, and soul. So this is very important to avoid this nicotine exposure because it, it leads to other things like early cancers and cancers that aren't typical in other populations. And if we can stop or we can mitigate very early, we are saving and providing healthy outcomes for our youth in the future. So I think we take this extremely seriously. This is very important to us. Um, and it's very important to have this conversation continued. So I am so pleased with this program. Um, and I do thank everybody for all the great work that's gone into this. We have a lot of work to do, but I think together we can we can do a great job helping our youth navigate this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cheyenne or uh, Tristan, would you like to add anything? You're on mute, Cheyenne. Sure. Um, I think that I just want to echo what Dr. Christensen had just mentioned, and I also just want to encourage organizations to and community members to truly go out and listen to your youth and understand uh, what their needs are. Um, look at prevention as a like through a holistic lens. Um, and then, of course, reiterating again something that Dr. Christensen had mentioned earlier in understanding the differences between traditional tobacco and commercial tobacco, um, ensuring that our youth understand those differences and uh, the, the respect and the uplift that we have for our traditional tobacco. Um, the English language can get us confused from time to time, um, just in the simple word of tobacco. Uh, tobacco, to me, um, can be something totally different than what tobacco may mean for um, a 13-year-old who's just now kind of figuring out 
uh, about cigarettes and vaping. And so education is a big thing. And I, I encourage everyone to do that through through a holistic and, and community approach because we are such a relational people. And um, Tristan mentioned support systems and youth at at this age they're developing those systems of support whether that's through family through community um, through each other and so um, it, this prevention aspect is really important and we really need to work together to educate our youth in a culturally appropriate manner um, to ensure best health outcomes for them. And Tristan, I don't know if you have anything to add on why um, youth tobacco prevention is so important. Yeah, I, I really appreciate both responses. And I think on top of that, one of the things that I think about too is a lot of our tribal communities all across Indian country, they have youth councils or youth coalitions that was brought, brought up. And some of these youth councils can really serve as a great establishment or a place of point of contact for a lot of these youth to whether they get training or to get resources available to them, even if there's toolkits for these youth councils to generate among themselves or have a sample to work on. And I think if these youth councils are able to identify some of those within their own communities, because they probably have relatives that are struggling with vaping or e-cigarettes, or they have friends uh, within their own family or within their own community. And uh, the other portion of that too, is a lot of our tribal colleges and universities could also serve as a good uh, pillar for a lot of college students that are, you know, going into an educational setting, going into a new environment, and even starting a club at their institution or educational place. So there's a lot of good opportunities for youth to get those resources and to have um, even little campaigning um, within their own schools within their own communities and to help educate them to help educate their parents their grandparents their peers so i think there's good opportunity for a lot a lot of youth to get involved within their own community but also to learn from one another too to talk about the issue and to learn from one another and i think that serves as a great way to get that interaction going to get engagement and the juices flowing of a lot of youth that have interest in really serving their community, but also taking care of themselves too. Thank you. Um, we have another uh, question. It is, um, are there, is, is there a curriculum or other educational materials with um, Next Legend? So I'll we'll start with that. Um, if you visit the Next Legend website, you can do it by searching uh, FDA Next Legends. You'll um, be from, from there, you'll, uh, see links to the ads, you'll see some other uh, links to other materials and resources that you can use. In terms of curriculum, I believe I heard Dr. Christensen talk about um, you're developing a, a, a toolkit on, on vaping. Is that um, true? And if so if you want to speak a little more on that. Yes, that is true. And thank you um, for the follow up on that. Um, we, we are working, we have a um, IHS, um, I guess it would be anti vaping team that's working very hard. Uh, you know, it is so vitally important has been pointed out by other speakers for this to be culturally sensitive and appropriate and certainly aimed at the youth that we are most concerned about. So this does take time as your project took time. And I'm so glad that you spent so much um, deliberate time developing this because it, it, it's a very, um, it's a great campaign. But we also want to do the same thing with our toolkits and we work with our tribal communities. Um, I definitely um, like Mr. Black's suggestion to really t bring our youth to the table and see what resonates with them because it, it, we can't design something that doesn't work for them. And it has to be very sensitive to how they see the world, how they communicate with each other, and how we communicate with them. So this will take us some time, but I am very, very happy to say that we're working hard at this. We're going to work with everybody we need to so that we get the best product, the best campaign for them, and the best toolkit. So uh, as I said, we're very excited about this, and we'll certainly get it out as as quickly as we can, but we want it to be effective, meaningful, and, and definitely uh, addresses the needs of our youth. So um, thank you again for, for bringing that back up. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Um, 
several of our youth have expressed an interest in finding out about internships, perhaps the summer um, that might be available to them um, to develop skills to work within their communities. Does um, FDA or the Center for American Youth offer any um, opportunities? Um, I guess I'll open it up to anyone. If, um, yeah, I would encourage um, leaders, uh, maybe community members, community leaders who work with youth or youth themselves to um, sign up for our CNAY listserv. You can go to CNAY.org. We're often sending out opportunity, partner opportunities or opportunities within our own organization that can then be spread within throughout the community. Um, and then additionally, we have our leadership and various fellowship opportunities at the center. Again, you can view those at cnay.org. Um, that is one of the programs that actually Tristan is involved in right now. He's actually um, coming out to DC next week to um, do some experiential um, advocacy training, experiential learning and things of that nature. And so we do have a lot of opportunities, a lot of programs uh, where youth can develop skills skills or even community organizing skills, leadership skills, advocacy skills, so that they can do the work that they want to do within their community so that they can truly lead um, in the work that they see as needed. Thank you. Um, I know within FDA, there's lots of different um, internship programs. And um, I know we love to encourage a lot of you know, different diverse backgrounds um, as a way to get into public health. So um, a lot of them require and going through different programs like ORISE or, or PATH. So I think if, if you want more information, happy to follow up. If you, again, send an email to that uh, email box, um, we'd love to um, support youth in, in uh, working on public health. Um, the next question, Dr. Um, Califf, I wonder if you would take this on. Um, why is um, addressing health um, inequality a priority for the agency? Uh, it's a real uh, priority for all of health and human services and the current uh, Biden administration. As we look at the United States as a whole, there's some alarming trends that are going on. Um, we've had less of an improvement in life expectancy than our peer countries, let's say in Europe and Japan, et cetera. So the gap right now in life expectancy between the U.S. and other high-income countries is five years. In other words, our people are living uh, five years shorter life than other high income countries on average. But then if you look beneath that, um, uh, it's even more concerning. There's up to a 20 year difference in life expectancy depending on where you live. And of course we know at the core of all this um, are difference in what's called the social determinants of health, education, wealth, um, and Sometimes just the physical environment, distance from specialist uh, physicians, for example. And so if we're going to improve our national status, um, we've got to bring everybody up. And um, beyond just being a matter of national status, it's just a matter of human rights that one should expect equal opportunity to have a long and um, active uh, life. So this is a big focus. Um, it's really important that we reach all the people who have been disadvantaged in the past and uh, give them uh, as uh, equal an opportunity as we possibly can. Thank you. Uh, I think this uh, that will be the last question that we have. Um, this will conclude today's webinar. Again, I want to thank everyone for joining us and for all the wonderful speakers um, we had today. Uh, one more plug for if you want to find campaign resources, search uh, FDA Next Legends online and you'll find camp the campaign website. Um, you'll find information on campaign, how we uh, develop the campaign, the two ads we premiered today and links to online materials for print or download. Again, thank you so much for um, joining us to kick off Next Legends. Have a great day. Thank you.